Welcome back, uh, ladies and gentlemen, to Filament Health's channel, forefronting the psychedelic industry. Joining us, as always, the Chief Executive Officer, Ben Lightburn. Welcome back, sir. Thank you so much. A pleasure, man. I think this is our first kickoff. i got to say Happy New Year's, and you're already kicking the year off with some pretty big news is Filament will be licensing its botanical uh, psilocybin drug candidate to Cybin Therapeutics, another player in this space, for two upcoming phase two clinical trials addressing uh, depression and alcohol use disorder, which are huge uh, proponents to the psychedelic uh, movement. Uh, do you want to touch base on this and exactly what's going on with this news? Sure. So uh, as you mentioned, um, we announced our second um, uh, licensing deal to a commercial uh, party that's running uh, clinical trials. Um, and the awesome thing is that they're going to be running clinical trials using a filaments in-house drug candidate. Um, so after our first announcement last year with a company called NPO Tech Biosciences, now we have the second announcement with Cybin Therapeutics. Cybin's focused on, as you said, depression and um, alcohol use disorder. And in fact, uh, their first clinical trial, um, the application has already been submitted to Health Canada. Uh, so, you know, in the next couple of weeks, we'll, we'll probably hear back on that to see um, whether this trial will get approved. If it does, um, and obviously we, we think that it will, um, this will actually be the second time that our products have been approved for use in a Health Canada approved trial. Again, re reminding your, your viewers that last year we got approval to go into a phase one clinical trial authorized by the FDA in the United States. Um, now we're also quickly adding uh, Health Canada approvals as well for our drugs. So it's very, very exciting time for Filament. Um, we're seeing um, a network of different clinical trial operators that are, that are paying us uh, money, in fact, to have our product in their clinical trial, uh, which is a really good way of spreading the I guess the risk and the and the financial burden of, of drug de development to other parties. Yeah, this is uh, incredible news, and it's nice to see this industry continue to move forward uh, against uh, a lot of the the current macroeconomic circumstances, right? Because I feel like people have kind of zoned out a little bit from the fundamentals of business these days. And I wouldn't mind uh, kind of getting your opinion here, uh, just kind of taking a look at 2022 guidance in the mix of hyperinflation, Fed meeting this week, all this volatile earnings season. Um, you just offer some uh, insights here, and just kind of how you feel about the general markets. Well, we were joking before that if uh, if prognosticators knew what they were prognosticating about, they probably wouldn't be prognosticating. They would probably be retired on a on a beach somewhere with a, with a, with a daiquiri or, or or a margarita. Look, I think as it pertains specifically to psychedelic companies in the macroeconomic environment, any serious investor in the space knows that it's going to take time to get these uh, psychedelic medicines out to market. And the broader macroeconomic forces are going to go up and down and ebb and flow. And look at the psychedelics market a, a year ago. It was a, a time of rampant enthusiasm and inflated expectations. Uh, those expectations have perhaps tamped down a bit now, uh, but we expect them to go up again in, in the future. It could, it, could, it could change on a dime. The, the only thing that's for sure is that nothing's, in, nothing's certain. Um, you know, we're, the psychedelics industry is looking to address uh, some of the biggest challenges that our society faces, right? And these are not challenges that are gonna be addressed overnight or anytime soon. It's gonna take a lot of careful work, especially with psychedelics starting from a, um, a place relatively in the shadows or even prohibited or associated with criminal activity to, to bring something from that kind of low state into one where they can help millions or hundreds of millions of people I said, it's going to take time and a lot of hard, diligent work, which, again, we're very proud to be part of a number of different trials now uh, uh, trying to investigate exactly that. Yeah, and I think uh, people under look to the fact that uh, in this cyclical sell-off, especially in the pharmaceutical sector, is usually when the big guys start paying attention uh, to the smaller cap guys, because you guys are making like critical movements. And as you know, these trials start playing out and you start proving out these capabilities that many people truly believe in, uh, thanks to a lot of these kind of pre-studies done by, uh, you know, a lot of these universities, I, I think it's it's going to uh, bode well for the long-term mindset investor that actually cares about uh, the, the differences that companies like you are making. But uh, on that note, Ben, I appreciate your time today. You're very welcome. It's always a pleasure. And if you guys have any questions, always let us know what you think in that comment section below and consider subscribing for that news as it comes down the wire. But in light of this, stay cool, stay awesome. And I look forward to catching you in the next one. Mm -hmm.